Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. So, Julie, I've got a really big announcement. What a big, is that? a big announcement for me and the fourteen other people who are listening to the podcast that care. Oh, this has to be something about a car or something. No, it's has well close. <laughs> a lot of cars. Formula One race weekend. Oh yes, in Austin. That's right. So this is the U.S. Grand Prix. Right. If you guys have never, a lot of people, I was, I've been really pleasantly surprised the number of people that have come to discover Formula One, which is my number one by far. Yeah. You know, and you too. Mm-hmm. I've, you know, sure. I started watching Formula no, One fun. back in the late '80s. Back when, as a matter of fact, right here by my. Uh, our little studio hanging in the wall is a picture of Art and Senna. So just to give you guys an idea of how far down the nerd spectrum we are. Yes. But yes, so that's this weekend and it's going to be on TV and the whole thing. So if you watch the Netflix special about Formula One, or if you haven't watched it, a lot of people discovered Formula One just in the last 24 months because of that net Netflix series. But definitely watch the U.S. Grand Prix. Formula One is extremely um interesting from so many different facets the, just the obviously the racing aspect the sport aspect but really formula one is it's almost like um it, if you want to know what's really going to happen next uh, and n- not just i was going to say uh, automotive engineering but engineering on a whole if you want to see what is going to happen in the you know next 10 to 20 years as far as technology what what are the how people are going to be viewing transport it always happens first on in formula one that's where hybrid started originally and then just the whole technological revolution and i don't want to bore all of you because like i said there's probably 16 or 17 of you that care but if you want to develop a new obsession (laughs) <laughs> and you're automotively inclined, I would strongly suggest you watch Formula One this weekend. Well, and you're right. It's it's fascinating from a lot of different perspectives. I like the people aspect because this is a global sport. Well, that was actually know. something I should have said, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they literally race all over the world. I think it's interesting from a logistics perspective that they can get things up and running with within a week with all the different trucks and the mechanics and the fly, They actually the have people. their own. They, they fly. Most yeah. of the teams fly all their, their gear. Uh, using uh, FedEx, and oh, yeah. so FedEx has a army. I don't even know it would be an army. It would be a, just a battalion, basically, Division of seven forty sevens and mm-hmm. jets that they are are, are custom um, to take all the Formula One teams and fly from one. It's crazy. But the, yeah, you actually touched on. I think one of the other things you and I really enjoy about it is the fact that it's a global sport, mm-hmm. and it's sometimes every weekend they're in a different area, but sometimes it's every two weekends. But a different area, not just the United States, but of the world. Yeah. And so you you'll see them go from Bahrain to like over to Singapore to then they'll be down in Australia. I mean they don't go in that order, Everywhere. but you guys get the idea. So it's a it started out as a European sport, but now it's a global sport, and so you get to see. And Julie and I've been to a lot of races around the world. And when you go to these different places, you get to see essentially the different cultures and just, it's fascinating. Well, even think. the award ceremonies can be very different, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, like yeah. Like who's awarding and what the trophies look like. And then just, you know, the physics of the whole thing and the engineering is really fascinating. So even if you just dabble in it a little bit and catch a race or two, I think the Austin Grand Prix this weekend is a really good sampler because it's such a fun race. Well, like in uh, Russia, when the Russian Grand Prix, it was like Putin. That was yeah. hand, handing out the trophies, Crazy, right? and then in um, you know Monaco, it's uh-huh. the uh, it's it, it's a the you, royalty the royal family was giving mm-hmm. out the trophies, and here in the United States, I, I think it's going to be Michael McCon or uh, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it just it's just weird, you know. The whole thing is incredible to watch, but Some, it is something fun. to expand your horizons. It's with. A, it's basically a big traveling circus, but yeah. So exactly. if you're looking for something to do on Sunday, definitely watch that. It's uh, taking place in Austin, and uh, Julie, I think I mentioned to you. They are going to have another Formula One race in the United States mm. in Miami. Awesome. And I heard, I hear tell that they're also thinking about bringing another one to New, New York, York City. Yeah, well, we'll definitely like get all those. New York City, not upstate. So or, it'll be like kind of like a Monaco-esque in the, city around race. the buildings. Those are different. Yeah, incredible. All right, well, there you go. There's your homework <laughs> assignment for expanding your horizons. And we are talking about manners. We are talking, and Julie was motivated to create this because. Well, because we have lots of questions coming from you guys, you know, in real estate, you're expected to either handshake, fist bump, hug past clients. What are you supposed to do? What about open house etiquette? What about, you know, Zoom calls or live listing presentations, vaccine questions? When is it appropriate? Should you talk about that at all? 
to mask or not mask. There's all of these things that are touching on a new world of etiquette that we haven't really had to think about. Well, people have and forgotten then about old it. Old school stuff too. Well, it is old school stuff, mm -hmm. but it's it, it's part of that whole je ne sais quoi, right? Mm -hmm. That whole what makes that person special? And we talk about, um, give you guys the example, everyone wants to be the person in the room that sort of has that bright light that everyone's gravitated towards. You guys are, maybe you've never consciously thought about why you're attracted to certain people, but they have a certain quality, thus the je ne sais quoi, mm -hmm. that you can't quite put your finger on. Well, Julie and I have thought about what those qualities are for the last 20 or 30 years, and we talk about them frequently on this podcast. It's all the things we talk about in our book, Harris Rules, but the number one thing that it is is communication. Definitely. Your ability to ask questions. We you know, coach you guys in the Ford script and other techniques to get people to want to converse with you. You can make so many more friends no matter what their income is, what their race is, what their educational mm -hmm. level, if you just learn to basically learn a few relatively basic skills. But one of the biggest ones truly is your manners. It is. And, you know, that's how people judge you, maybe consciously sometimes and subconsciously other times, where somebody might meet with you. And if you screw up some of these basic things, they're not always going to say, well, it was because they had a terrible handshake or whatever. They're going to say, you know, I just didn't really hit it off. It's, I just didn't really feel it. These are the tiny, tiny little mm -hmm. course corrective things that yes. if you do them gives you um, a unfair advantage, not mm -hmm. just in the workplace, but in life in general. This is very true. And this stuff does matter. And I, I think, you know, I've been reading a lot of articles about how, um, you know, people have noticed and studied that. And not that we're totally post-COVID yet, but because of lockdowns and because people were basement dwellers for a while, <laughs> we kind of got away from some of these basic manners. So I wanted to bring that back one manner at a time. Some of these are really simple. So let's jump back in. If you missed yesterday's podcast, we did uh, 16 points. And remember, our notes are always posted on timandjulieharris.com. Sometimes they don't make it over to iTunes and Stitcher and Spotify. They'll edit our notes so only maybe two or three points appear. Make sure you go over to timandjulieharris.com. And you, if you want to use these points for your own presentations, that's great. We always, we, that's the reason we put that content up because a lot of you guys need content for your team meetings, your office meetings, or maybe you're even trying to start your own podcast. We did do a series on how to start your own podcast, and this would be something fun for you to talk about as well. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have somebody that's going to be like if you're doing a guest based podcast, you and the other person like Julie and I do can kind of bounce off each other. But it is I'll tell you something else. It's, it's very fascinating to me. Some of the comments we had on this uh, podcast we started yesterday is depending on their age. And yes. it definitely is a generational mm -hmm. thing. The expectations of for manners yeah. has completely changed. And people, you know, you and I are, you know, we're five Middle decades old <laughs> yeah. so but if people are li uh, younger than us by 15 years because they weren't largely brought up to have these sort of base level manners yeah, that's true that when they learn these when they so if you're a millennial basically we're talking to you if you learn these base level manners and you start treating people that way you're going to have actually more of an advantage than people in julie and i's generation oh, and yeah. older because we were raised to have everybody manners. was like that right. pretty much and and covid yeah. did kill off whatever you know um, yeah, civility. Said, civility, right. And you and yeah. again, and, and people started deep diving into social networks and lost any, you know, last remaining, know. Uh, you know, areas of humanity. Yeah, especially when you're one-on-one, <laughs> -on -one, you know, when you're live, you know, not just on a Zoom call, but yep. you're actually out there in the wild. So some of these are kind of fun. Some of these are more serious than others. We're going to start with a fun one, which is number 17, smile with your eyes when you're wearing a mask. This is something that's been written on a lot with different manners columns because, you know, people are all masked up. And and I think uh, I read something that people are becoming more expressive with their eyes because that's all you've got to go with. Well, you and I are talking about this point as related to our daughter, Zoe, yeah. that kids even, you know, who knows what's going to go on with masking, guys? Who knows what's going to go on vaccines? Yeah, so we're not going to – some of you are thinking, oh, gosh, why are we still wearing masks? That's a political conversation that we're not going to have. So just here's the bottom line. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. And Julie and I are driving around the country. Trust me when I tell you, one, it's not just one state. It's one part of a state to another. People are essentially ma random. masking or not masking. It's really kind of a varied thing. But when you're in a market and, and you're in a business where your job is to help uh, people and be of service to others and everyone else is wearing a mask, if you're not going to wear a mask, you're going to stand out as being somebody that doesn't quite fit in. You're not in, you're not in Rome being a Roman. You know? Yeah, you need to defer to the people that you're around. It's yep. about them when but, you're being of service. But to regards to that point, it is fascinating that essentially um, children who are not, uh, who are essentially growing up wearing masks are not going to have 
the the root level psychological development as far as how to, how to read micro like social expressions. Social skills, really. Um, so to really mm-hmm. scale this up so people can understand the ramifications of it, there were studies that done, and some of you might remember this because they were horribly sad studies, of children that were in um, orphanages in Romania. And because they had no interaction, for the most part, they were just abandoned. They had no interaction with maybe just one nurse per day. When those uh, children became adults, they were completely dysfunctional and could yeah. never uh, relate to other people because they didn't form that type of mm-hmm. ability to communicate. And, the, and this is what's happening a lot uh, with the, all this masking is these little kids like Zoe's age and younger and even, even, even older, they're going to skip or they're going to miss out on what's going to be a very necessary part of, um, you know, development. They're not going to have the, right, they're not going to grow up with that. So all of us parents out there, we're going to have to think about how we're going to replace that. And frankly, it's watching TV sometimes, or it's basically, you know, going places where other kids are not masked, or they need to, they're going to, we're going to need to fill that cup for our our children so the next generation doesn't have some sort of strange dysfunction. It's, It's really interesting to study. Let's see. So the next one is pretty important. Number 18, turn your phone ringer off when you're on appointments. Don't keep checking it, even if you turn it off, because that's the next thing you're going to do. Look at the person who is speaking to you. There's a very basic manner. How many times when we were growing up did our parents say, look at me when I'm talking to you? Well, exactly. But people don't. They look around. They look at their phone. They check their their buzzer on their phone. They do like all of this, you know, it's almost like a a moth to the light kind of thing. Well, just think about this, though. If you are, again, trying to be the best version of yourself as a real estate professional, right? And you're amongst other people in your that you're competing against because you are competing all the time. And, and they're uh, not. It's become habitualized or normalized that they do not directly look at somebody when they're talking, mm-hmm. even if you know there's no expectation for it anymore for the most part, depending on your age, because it's okay to look at your phone. It's yeah. okay to be distracted. It's okay to look over someone's shoulders and look around. Now, what if you are the person who? is going to look at someone in the eye. If you're going to practice root level manners and you're going to show respect, that's what how they, the brain translates it, right? If I'm talking to Julie as I am right now and I'm looking around, she's thinking I'm thinking about something else or yeah, I'm you're distracted. Not on me. Right. But I'm looking at her, that's connecting at a higher level that people that you're competing against, you know, if they're checking their phones while they're talking to someone on a listing appointment or whatever, Again, the, the consumer's brain is going to say, I like this person more. They have something special that this other person doesn't have. They cared about me. Right. This is These yeah. are the tiny little things that make it so you get the listing. And easy to correct, too. Totally. It, a lot of these points come down to simply being present with who you're in front of or next to, right? Okay, so turn the phone off. Doesn't it drive you crazy when you're, like, even at dinner and somebody at the table next to you is their phone's constantly binging? It drives me insane. Well, but, Julie, when we go to dinner sometimes and you are looking at a couple that are supposedly having a nice romantic dinner and they're updating their Instagram or I whatever know. while they're spending, you know, a couple hundred bucks for a nice dinner, I just, that doesn't even... It's no bueno. It, look, it's it does look It's weird. bizarre. It does, but it's be, it is unfortunately becoming kind of normal. But what is the what are you telling somebody when you're with them and you're checking your phone while you're with them? Aren't you well, telling you're not them, really with them? Right, you're telling them that you are boring. You're not as important as somebody that might be liking right. some tweet. You're sending all kinds of mixed messages it's to ridiculous. them, whether they're consciously receiving it as a a little bit of a put down or the, but they are definitely receiving it subconsciously as you're not fully engaged. You're not they you don't see them as important enough for you to be completely present with them at that very moment. Again, if you yeah. guys stop doing stuff like that, as you will see the accumulation effect as you then start developing the reputation of somebody that has something little quite extra. I can't quite put my foot uh, finger on it. This person's a little bit special because when I'm around them, they are making They're me engaged. engaged. Exactly. They're focused. You know, uh, some of our FBI friends were talking about- Julie, put uh, that in tra- context. No, no, no. no it's, we're, we're talking about- Parents on playgrounds right, looking some, at their phones. You said something funny. You didn't our realize FBI it. Friends. Some of our FBI friends. Meaning we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, so we have a lot. So oh, our weird. listeners right now are going like, why, why the that? hell do you guys have a bunch of friends in the FBI? Oh, no. Well, tell them. Well, because they're, I guess, what do you call They're stationed here. They're they're assigned here. Yeah. Um, and they're around. I mean, several of them are in uh, parents of, fr- of Zoe's classmates. And they're assigned here for different missions. One of one of the one that I'm talking about uh, investigates child abduction and abuse and neglect and stuff. And what they the reason I brought her up is because they talk about how they study parents that are supposed to be like watching their little kids on the playground, but they're and one of the the tests that they do to see how much parents are paying attention is they'll run these uh, 
basically mock kidnappings. Right. So the kid's coming down the slide, the mom or dad's on their phone, not paying attention, and how long does it take for them to notice their kid's missing? Right? So it's not just with adult uh, conversations to be present. It's also around your kids. Well, so you're so. now touching on, so we, we do have a, a, some friends, and their last names actually are Harris, that are both <laughs> FBI agents, so they're both yeah. married. So, you know, if Julie and I were badasses, we'd be them, but we're not. We're not. <laughs> so, we just have badass friends. But she, yeah, That's right. We do. <laughs> yeah. Which, speaking of which, did I tell you next week we're interviewing two Navy not SEALs? Not one, but two Navy two, SEALs. Two Navy SEALs awesome. on this podcast. And we've got Peter Schiff on the podcast next week, too. Yeah. Uh, so, week. It is. Um, it's going to be a lot of work. So uh, with regards to the FBI folks, mm-hmm. you and I were having drinks with them, mm-hmm. and they were telling us about how they have watched, the FBI has watched uh, in videos above mm-hmm. playgrounds as moms or dads or whatever uh-huh. will be sitting on their phones, and the predators mm-hmm. who are literally trying to kidnap their kids are watching the parents to see when the parents are on their phones yeah. and then distracting the kids. And, and they just do it just like that. And it is so fast. That's what really it's was horrible. incredible. But the, yeah. the, these predator types are so damn fast at snatching mm-hmm. children. That's right. And, and if people, because they're not present, because they're on their damn phones, mm-hmm. have made it so easy. So these yeah. predators go to the playgrounds. They mm-hmm. act like they're parents. So they act like they're you know there to sure. you know pick up a kid or whatever. And they are indeed there to pick up a kid, but not a kid yeah, that not is theirs. theirs. Yeah. Yeah. So put your phone down. Put your damn phone down. Good exactly. Grief. Yes. All right. So, and you know, it's okay to leave a message. You've all heard them before. If you're, you know, calling and you're hitting my voicemail, leave me a good phone number where I can call you back when I'm not in an appointment. Hey, I'm going to go on another tangent. Yes. Okay. Uh, so tangent warning. Well, it's not a bad one though. Okay. Um, the uh, cool thing that's happening right now in technology, which mm-hmm. I'm really excited about, and I'm excited about for a selfish reason primarily, mm-hmm. because uh, I don't have to wear glasses all the time, but I do wear glasses mm-hmm. all the time for reasons I don't need to get into. Yep. But the phone is the your you know your cell Interface. phone is a um, obviously a, a partition. It's a wall between you and everything else that's around you. But these new this new technology that's coming out. So I mean, just think of that. It's what you're you're holding like a six a inch. Pro, what, you're holding a six inch partition mm-hmm. that's separating you and the person that you're supposed to be with. Well, the, they're uh, Facebook last week or two weeks ago. And also Apple, they're coming out, Facebook did last week in conjunction with Ray-Ban. Uh, they're called Ray-Ban Stories. You guys ought to Google these. They're badass. And then um, Apple's coming out with something called Apple Glass. They're glasses that look like normal glasses, but they're going to have full interface in them that you normally, all the normal things you'd be doing on your uh, iPhone or your Android device are going to be integrated with your glasses and that includes a camera that includes being able to take pictures that includes being able to listen to podcasts and if the rumors about the apple uh, glasses are true it also is going to be enable you to see on through the lenses you're going to be able to pull up different things that would normally require you to look at the phone it'll read you your emails read you your text you can send audio text back which by the way on the iphone audio text works fantastic you know just do a little recording so all these things are coming to glasses and the reason i like them aside from the fact that i wear glasses and it's not you know yeah. uh, everyone else is gonna be wearing glasses soon is what i'm saying so, i mean think <laughs> about that from, better but think about that from a fashion yeah, perspective i know it's the glasses companies are what we should all invest in yeah, no doubt but like Lu- what is that one lumina is not who, who owns a ray-ban it's not oh, an American anymore. Remember. It's owned by an Italian company. Yeah, I know. Like Lumica. Lumix yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. everyone, the new fashion trend, listen, you've heard it here first. Everybody is going to be wearing glasses, even if they don't need a prescription. Mm-hmm. They're going to be wearing all kinds of different glasses. And I, and phones in the, themselves are going to start becoming obsolete, replacing uh, replaced by these wearables. That's going to be really interesting to watch. It's going to be incredible. But this is going to remove that partition. That's yes. the reason I'm excited about it. Yeah, that extra you're going to be distraction. Wearing, you're going to be wearing glasses. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I are going to be talking to somebody. And you then can basically yeah. do what all the things that would normally distract you are not going to distract you. You're not going to look away. You're going to be looking through your lenses. I wonder whether it's going to be weird looking somebody in the eye and if you can tell that their eyes are manipulating their glasses to do what they want to do. I don't know. This well, is be so what Julie's saying is what how the Apple Glass are supposedly going to work. You're going to be able to – there's going to be a little um, – fonts or not fonts but little icons, uh, icons right mm-hmm. that'll appear in places but only you can see them they'll only be reflected in they won't be reflected out so the person you're looking at won't be able to see 
that you're what looking you're up to? That, that you know that you're thinking that you're watching a YouTube video up in the corner of your eye. You know they won't be able to necessarily no, see that. But look, think about it from a perspective of a real estate agent. Yeah. This this to me is going to be really good for a whole bunch of reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, they're going to think about the mass explosion, good and bad. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely good and bad of people doing a video. Oh, yeah. Think how much everywhere. easier it's going to be for people to start creating mm -hmm. video content. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be easier for them to take pictures. It's going to be e easier for them to start essentially fully integrating mm -hmm. into all these different forms of mass media and communication. I think that's yeah, really amazing. It sounds pretty interesting. And, and you, but your I'll mind be cautiously go, optimistic. It, well, exactly, because there'll be a lot of people that abuse it. Better turn too. that crap off while you're driving. Yeah, well, you you won't you won't turn it off while you're driving. But I, honestly, I'd rather have someone looking through glasses, looking at the road, mm -hmm. and and interact, then looking at their phones, and then looking That's at their true. damn phones and texting. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, so let's see. Turn your phone off when you're on appointments, but All leave right. your glasses on. Leave your glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Number nineteen is easy. Hold the door for the person behind you, man or woman. That's just polite. I did have two people, two ladies in San Francisco that basically said I could get the door myself, honey. Oh. Actually, I didn't even say honey. But when I was in San Francisco, so again, that's going to be one of those things. When well, in Rome, them. that's not you. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. You know, exactly. it, whereas in Texas, if you don't open the door for a lady, she'll shoot you. She'll shoot you. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. Number twenty. Watch your body <laughs> language. Don't cross all your limbs, arms, and legs, and expect for somebody to respond favorably to you. That is a subconsciously closing off of the relationship. So watch your own body language, and also watch other people's body language. You know. One of the things that we learned uh, with a listing presentation is when somebody pushes themselves back from the, the desk and crosses their arms, you're kind of losing them. So you want to watch yourself, but also who you're presenting to. And don't overanalyze this and go down the NLP rabbit hole because no, you will never, you'll never tells. return. Right? Exactly. All right. Number 21, cough or sneeze into your arm. Why into your arm? Because if you cough or sneeze into your hand and then you fist bump somebody, they're going to be grossed out and it's more sanitary into your arm. Now, I'll take your arm that, touches less stuff. I'll take that a step further. Mm -hmm. Always have a handkerchief with you. Yes. You know, our fathers right. did. Yeah, absolutely. But that might be a return of handkerchiefs. That might be. I know. I've, you know what? I've seen ladies wearing gloves. Yeah. Well. You know, so there you are. All right. Number 22, easy to do. Write handwritten cards regularly. Hand address and use commemorative stamps. They don't cost any more. They're just more interesting, less boring, and more likely to be opened. Okay, hold and on. Use good quality stationery. I have a question for you. Yes. Be honest. What? When you were, uh, I know you uh, were getting inspiration for these points from a different Emily Post and others. Mm -hmm. Did she say use commemorative stamps, or was yeah. that a Jilly point? Well, that's something that I've known for a long time from different, like uh, the book that says how the art of the handwritten card. Right. So, so, that, so you I like doing it. I use it all the time. When you go to the buy your stamps, you can even do it on uh, USPS.com. You just ask for something interesting, right? So, Julie's a stamp collector is the reason I knew yeah. that that was an add-on. And use good stationery. Don't just use your generic, you know, make it look nice. All right, 23, learn and remember people's names. This is more powerful than you think. This is something that I try to work on all the time because we're always meeting new people. So it helps to associate them with something, right? <laughs> so even in my contacts, I'll say, like, uh, we have a friend named Curie, and she's one of the first people I met here, but I labeled her as Curie Aria's mom so that I remember who she is, and then I put a little tag for the school name. It, it helps if you associate them with something. It might be, I don't know, um, Tim with the red car, just to help jog your memory. So try to remember people's names, their kids' names. I'm way easier with dogs' names for some reason. Well, we get – people know <laughs> us as Zoe's parents. We hear I that know. a lot. Yeah, well – They don't know. even know our names. We're Zoe's, Zoe's parents. We, we've, you know, we've been out in public here, and obviously when we were walking around taking Zoe someplace, and people will say hi to Zoe, and, and they'll just, they don't even know who we are. I know. She did it to uh, her friend Maverick this morning when she saw Matt. Oh, yeah? She goes, oh, that's Maverick's dad. <laughs> you know, I think that's how they identify all of us. All right. So, number 24, this is something people can be awkward about. Take a compliment well. Don't be weird about it. Your scripts are, oh, you're so kind to say that, or what a lovely thing to say. Don't backtrack. Don't be weird about it. Don't make them feel uncomfortable because they complimented you. So, get better at that. That's an easy little manner. Why are people, and I have this problem sometimes too, mm -hmm. why, so why are people sometimes hesitant to take a compliment or receive a gift? I, I'm not sure why that is. I guess that it, it just... I think subconsciously makes you perhaps feel indebted of reciprocity or sometimes it takes you by surprise and you just don't know what to say. I think it's that. Yeah. So, but, you know, you just need scripts like everything else in life. 
So you can say, you're so kind, so you know, thanks very much. I, I watch how people handle that on the going into and out of podcast interviews because people who are interviewed a lot have a fairly well-polished uh, compliment receptor, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. Well, it, the other thing is, is if somebody gives you a compliment, it's it, you give them, you say thank you, but then what happens after that, mm-hmm. there's always this little awkward void, yeah. you know, where you don't necessarily have to, uh, and I think that's what causes people to be taken by surprise and know what to, not know yeah. what to say. And they don't, frankly, most people n- nowadays, because most people don't really have, you know, they're not overtly thinking about uh, mm-hmm. manners and whatnot. They don't give compliments to other people. So when you yeah. receive one, you're just not, you're weirded you're, out by it. You're weirded out about <laughs> it. You're, and you're, th- you're thinking that person's trying to manipulate you somehow. Mm-hmm. But people are oftentimes going to be wanting to show, especially going into the holidays, don't be surprised if people do give you compliments. Ladies are a lot easier to give, you know, the yeah. ladies give compliments to each other all the time. That's not something you hear a lot from men. But again, this is going back to the secret sauce. If you want to make yourself stand out, if you want to make yourself truly special, learn how to give compliments to men and to women. And then you don't think if you give some a nice compliment about anything that, you know, it's sincere, right? You, uh, men, it's easy. Watch, you know, watch, it watches yeah. and your all glasses, those types of things, your, right? You, know. you get, you don't think that that person's not going to seek you out from now until eternity because you made them feel good for that little microsecond. Well, that goes back to the point. People forget what you say, but they remember how you made, you made them feel. feel. So there you are. Okay. So get good at actually taking compliments. Well, number 25, ask before posting on social media, especially pictures of other people's kids, events that are not your events. When in doubt, ask before posting. Don't assume that everybody wants to be plastered on your social media. So let's scale this out and make it super practical for mm-hmm. the sake of real estate agents. Yes. Um, always ask before you put an open house sign in somebody's yard. Yes. And that we, I remember two, maybe three times that we took listings because in, we, in this area that we had a lot of listings, usually in this New Albany area, we would always, and we had uh, a 1.7 buyer's agents to work for us, and we always asked them to ask permission of the seller. If you know, a lot of sellers' yards are strategically positioned that it's a perfect place for an open sign. And every other agent, since the history of agents, had always just put a sign there without mm-hmm. asking the owner. Well, when you go up and you ask the owner, I promise you they're going to remember that. And I remember personally having done that where they'd say, I can't believe you asked. Everyone just does it every Sunday. Right. And then Julie and I, I can remember at least two or three listings mm-hmm. that in the future, those people that we had asked, they listened to their house with us just because we knocked on their door That's and asked true. permission. I, I absolutely remember that. And, you know, up until the point where you asked permission, it had probably been a real bone of contention oh, yeah. with them. They, they were kind of pissy about it. You could it. tell. Yeah. And then you made that all go away. So it's all good. All right. We have point number 26. Watch your truck driver potty mouth. Not everyone is okay throwing swear words around. There are some people where it's actually uh, against their religion or against their ethos, whatever. Err on the side of not being a potty mouth. It's not good. All right. Number 27. Dress a notch better than everyone you're with. Flip flops are not real shoes unless you are in the shower or at the beach Hold or on. live in Puerto Rico. We're both, a podcast. we're both wearing flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 93 degrees out, so we get to get away with a little bit more. But I certainly wouldn't wear them to a listing presentation. Well, but okay. this is a really important point. Yes. Not we're talking well, about flip flops. Well, Tom Ford, the designer, says that dressing well is a form of good manners. So... Again, you want to have an unfair advantage in the marketplace wherever you go. Um, when you're out in the public, so if you're a real estate agent, you expect to be successful. You are by nature. You have to start acting and thinking like you're a public person because people are going to be valuing you and evaluating you, uh, evaluating you based on how you look first. Now think about this. It only makes sense. If you have a storefront and you're trying to sell pies, it's Bob's Pie Store. Obviously, the storefront's going to have to look great. Otherwise, people are never going to want to go in. And when they go in, then they're going to have a whole, you know, the experience even uh, better be even multiplied in the, in the positive way. But if, they, if the storefront itself looks like crap, if the, you know, just you can imagine, you just you visualize a horrible looking store and it says Bob's Pies. Not only is nobody ever going to go into Bob's Pies, but people are going to assume the dude named Bob who owns Bob Pi- Bob's Pies is completely out to lunch. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't have a storefront real estate agents because really it's a virtual business anymore. You sure as hell don't need an office. So when you are walking around looking like you're some disheveled old building that no one's going to ever want to you know, consider doing business within, that is how you look. That is, I'm sorry, that is the perception that people have when you don't make an, a point of dressing a notch better dressing a notch better in every single environment you ever find yourself in 
It doesn't even matter if everyone's wearing sweatpants and whatever. Wear nice sweatpants, you know? Yeah, make it, an effort. You know, it, so People this, notice. whatever the norm is for your marketplace, Take it a step, take it a notch up. There's no place in the United States outside of maybe Manhattan where people wear suits and ties anymore. But if you were to wear a sports jacket and a mm -hmm. nice shirt and everyone else is wearing T-shirts, you instantly yep. have set yourself apart. So dressing nice. Now, again, we can drill down on dressing nice. Well, until we like, do in the book. Yeah, read our book, Harris Rules, guys, because Julie gives, we spent a lot of time. We Very talked, specific. Yep, we went to, we actually did a shocking amount of research on the whole dressing nice thing because it was interesting. Yeah. But you can just, you don't have to spend a lot of nice, uh, a lot of money to look really nice. You can buy off the rack stuff. And when Julie and I got into real estate, we bought used stuff. We went to thrift shops and, all, and consignment. And all but of our you can, you know, you can do that, save a bunch of money and get it tailored so exactly. it actually fits you. That right. looks a lot better. And, and that should have been a little mini dressing point. Make sure your clothes fit you and don't walk around, you know, looking disheveled or And untucked. again, read the book, Harris Rules. Yeah. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. We've, you know, <laughs> it's everywhere. It is. It's on its third or fourth reorder. So go ahead and get uh, Harris Rules. It's also available at Audible. You can download it right now and listen to it over the weekend. Exactly. Okay, number 28. This is easy to fix. Don't stand in doorways or in the middle of the grocery aisle. Don't just go in. I sometimes do this when I go into a store I like and I kind of stall out. Because I'm like stunned, but uh, don't stand in doorways or in the middle of the grocery aisle. That just you know is bad manners. All right, number twenty nine. Always accept hand sanitizer when somebody offers. Otherwise, you're saying you're okay spreading your germs. But Doesn't matter whether you want to or not. If they're offering it, they're showing you that they're sensitive to that. Take the sanity. And again, don't make it into a political thing. But this no. actually, you can expand on this point. Mm -hmm. When you go on the listing appointment, and again, this is part of our coaching program, and they're always going to offer you something because, you know, well, honestly, depending on the generation, manners. they may have manners. <laughs> always say yes. It doesn't mean you have to consume yeah. it. Even if it's a glass of water. Right. We've, you know. We went to listing appointments before where it's a listing appointment. We're coming over to talk to you about selling your house, Mr. Seller. And they made dinner. I know. I totally remember that. Yeah, they, those, those, that's going to happen. You know what you're going to do? You're, you're going to eat dinner. You're going to enjoy the hell out of the buttered squash, you know, disgustingness. <laughs> They're <laughs> and, casseroles. And you're going to ask for a second serving because chances are you're going to list the house and it's going to be worth 12 or 15 grand. And you never know. Yeah. It actually might taste good. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people that uh, – Food is very communal for them, Tef yep. and it's very amiable, and it's giving, and you're better to err on the side of saying, yes, please, even if you just, you know, say, I just had dinner, I'll just try a taste. You well, know? You, you and I are on, uh, you know, we self-restricted diets, right? Yeah. You're, we're generally speaking low carb. Yeah. And when we are environments- High caffeine. Right, high caffeine. And we're in environments where people offer us something that's absolutely not in our normal diet. And I've, made, and I've made this mistake before, truthfully. Yeah. Um, they'll, you can see they're a little bit, um, well, they're offended. offended and it's just, it's not a, it's not an overt offense. It's a subconscious offense, but you can see it in their, their facial, their micro yeah. expressions in their face. And it's like, I've caught myself doing that before. Yeah. And, and they'll offer me something that's absolutely not something I'd normally ever consume. And I'll, and I'll, in, uh, just uh, reactively say no thank you but then i'll say oh i'm just kidding how can i pass up on those so i catch yeah. myself well because subconsciously they're giving you a gift yes you know so I, but I, food it, food yeah. is a different kind of gift it is especially something that someone's made with their hands yeah i mean it's pretty personal it so is they, so of course they're offended if you don't do it if you don't try their cookies or whatever okay so let's see number 30 you don't ask somebody to hold your phone wallet or drink for you this has become taboo Thanks to COVID. People ask you to hold your wallet? Hold, yeah, hold anything of theirs, anything that their hands have been on. You're not Who, supposed to do that. Has anyone That's, ever asked you to hold, to hold? Yeah, you last, week, last weekend we were at something and, and that was going on a lot because people were trying to screw with their phones while they had a drink in their hand. Huh. Yeah, so don't do it. It's just gross. Yeah. All right, number 31, respect personal place, personal space plus three to six feet. Don't be the last person in an already crowded elevator, for example. Take the next one. Respect personal space. Even if you're more comfortable with it for, you know, for your reasons, you've got to respect the space. Number 32, ask permission to use a person's first name and make sure you're pronouncing it correctly. That comes up a lot, right? Uh, let's see. Number 33, push your chair in when you leave a table. Brush the crumbs and do a napkin. Don't make somebody else do this for you. We talked about this earlier about bussing your table. 
But when you're at somebody's house, when you leave the listing presentation, dining room table, push your chair in. Well, so you can bind some of these points. So you're mm -hmm. at a restaurant this weekend. You're going to leave some crumbs on the table. The uh, And let's say it's a Starbucks. We use Starbucks as examples. Mm -hmm. There are no busting of tables in Starbucks, basically. If you're in a busy Starbucks, by the end of the day, the tables look like, you know, Correct. basically our daughter's eating at them. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have, if you are the one that's then, uh, and let's just, you know, there's some, you know, let's scale this up. You're at a restaurant. And there is a, someone busting tables. And they do see you uh, clearing off, you know, cleaning up after yourself and being respectful of the service that they provide. Mm -hmm. And then you do follow our previous point. And you do leave a nice, uh, a decent tip. And you do say thank you on the back of a business card. The combination of all those things. And then you push your chair in. Right. And then they see you holding the door open for the person behind you when you leave. You're going to come off as a more... Uh, person of manners, a classy individual versus being a heathen about all those things. You think you have to try to make yourself special in the marketplace by saying, being some sort of influencer on Instagram. This is how you are someone who's unique and special and desirable in the world. You do all, you combine all these points and you start becoming that person. And I'll, I'll say it again. It's even relevant for people that are our age and older, but especially relevant for the younger generation. Mm -hmm. They, for the most part, weren't taught these things. There used to be something in the South called cotillion. There are some states that still do it, but you it's guys not know what prevalent. cotillion is. It's basically finishing school for young men and ladies, where yeah. they learn how to shake hands and they learn how to be polite. And if you're a, a teenage boy asking a girl out to homecoming, you talk to her father about it first, and you know manners. So yeah, it's here and there. I, I kind of think it's going to come back a little bit. So listen, we're going to round the bend on today's show. A lot of you have very busy weekends. Um, we'll we're, resume on Monday. We've got a handful of points to go. Right. A lot of you have been asking Julie and I about eXp Realty. And I want to remind you that, of course, Julie and I are here to sponsor you for eXp Realty. If you're interested in joining eXp Realty and you have not chosen a sponsor yet, you can just join eXp Realty and name Julie Harris from Georgetown, Texas as your sponsor, or you can just text me directly and Julie and I will answer any questions you have and walk you through the application personally. So it's, and my cell phone number is 512-758-0206. That is my real cell phone number. Do not call. A lot of you call. I'll never answer the phone. It always goes to voicemail and the voicemail says, do not leave a voicemail. It says text. Okay. So do text, don't call. And let's have a conversation about eXp. So if you're ready to join and you're looking for a sponsor, just text me directly at 512-758-0206. If you're just interested in learning more about eXp, that's great as well. Just text the letters eXp to 47372 and we'll text you back some videos and you can get to know eXp and decide whether it's the right path for you when you're choosing a new real estate broker. This is the time of year when most agents will just, you know, they're going to think about what do I need to do to replicate this great year I had this year or make it better? Maybe this year wasn't as great as it would have been otherwise. And you're kind of going through the checklist of things that you want to improve upon before the new year rolls around. Number one thing should be the broker. There's no doubt about that. Your environment, your professional environment is without a doubt the most important influencer on your um, success in real estate or in life in general. Yep, definitely matters. So, yes, you have lots of homework. Put a check mark next to the things that you do really well that we've talked about and maybe write some notes to yourself, remind yourself about the stuff that you want to improve on and practice it this weekend. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show on Monday.